Okay, hello. Um, I know it's been a long day for most of you, uh, but please pretend that I have your attention. Um, first of all, allow me to introduce myself. Uh, you can see my name over there. I'm Lubos Dudik. I'm from uh, the Comenius University in Bratislava. I'm a second year PhD student there at the Department of uh, English Studies, English and American Studies. Um, my field is linguistics uh, and more specifically neologisms. Um, and well, this will be about interpreting and why. Um, actually, last year in September 2014, I started uh, the European Master's course of conference interpreting. Uh, this June 2015, um, I successfully finished the course and I passed the accreditation exams to become an interpreter for the EU institutions. So I'm officially an accredited interpreter for the EU. Um, so that's why I'll be, I'll be talking about interpreting. Uh, I'll be talking about my experience with interpreting, my struggles, uh, what I had to do and what I had to learn, uh, and what I'm still learning um, and still struggling with sometimes. Um, okay, well, I will start the speech with the word um, imagine. Actually, a lot of this, a lot of speakers start with this word. Uh, almost everyone. John Lennon started a song with that word, so I'll start um, with this word as well. Imagine three of your closest people. I don't know, your f friends, um, Miroslava, your husband, anyone? The three of your closest people, friends, family. Three people that you know very well. Now imagine them speak. Uh, most likely, each and every one of them has their own unique way of speaking. They use a certain set of phrases, they have their own idiolect, uh, they use a certain melody, um, they use certain gestures, for example. Uh, they have their own unique way of speaking, which creates their identity. There are other factors which create your identity, but when you're an interpreter, basically your identity is reduced to your voice and to your speaking. That's what the audience perceives from your work. That's what the audience judges you by. Um, and as an interpreter, um, you actually have to fulfill certain expectations. You have to meet certain standards uh, when it comes to your way of speaking. Um, I will somehow harken back to a Michael Cronin's lecture where he mentioned the translator's invisibility. Actually, the interpreter is literally invisible in most contexts. You don't see him or her, you just hear them. Uh, maybe if it's uh, consecutive interpreting, you can see them. And their identity, in this case, is also formed by the gestures and by, how they, by their body language. Uh, but mostly, it's uh, their voice. Now, uh, often interpreting studies concentrate, whoa, this did not, this looked different in my computer. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to blame it on the technology. No, really, it did. Um, generally, uh, interpreting studies um, concentrate on these skills, knowledge of languages, knowledge of cultures, knowledge of the background, political knowledge, ability to analyze text, uh, to deconstruct it and reconstruct it, the ability to transfer meaning from one language to another. Now, these are the skills when it comes to the content. Uh, now, when you master these skills, you sometimes may feel, oh, I'm already there, it's, it's good, I'm an interpreter. Actually, you're not even halfway there, sadly, because there's a lot more to work with. Um, I will start with a few quotations. Vera Makarova, in her book on interpreting, says that interpreting is like driving and it needs constant conscious improvement. She says that you learn on the job as well as a driver. Um, Roderick Jones, in his book on conference interpreting, uh, talks about how an interpreter needs to always broaden their knowledge. Uh, I think these examples are very good. Um, we will most likely concentrate on the driving part rather than on broadening your knowledge. Um, I think an interpreter, in a way, is a performance artist. Uh, an interpreter is like a dancer or like an actor, uh, like a musician. So an interpreter is striving to give the best performance uh, that they can. Uh, they're trying to do their best. Uh, an interpreter is or should be somehow like a radio presenter. Now I will refer to a typical Slovak cultural context. You probably know um, 
Slovak Radio 1, Slovak National Radio, usually on Sunday at 12 at noon, lunchtime, there's somebody uh, presenting the news and they speak with very good Slovak and very good diction and they articulate everything. They, they have a very good knowledge of the language and very good use and command of that language. That, that is what you should be striving for as an interpreter. And so, as an interpreter, you somehow create an alter ego. Coming back to the, your specific way of speaking, you create an alter ego um, because you identify um, who you are, how you speak. However you speak is fine. If you speak slowly, that's fine. Quickly, that's okay. If you're a repetitive speaker or a hesitating speaker, it is all fine. But as an interpreter, you have to uh, meet certain expectations. Uh, there are some problems a person might struggle with. Uh, lack of melody, slurred speech, long sentences, self-doubting speech, uh, being self-conscious, being disinterested, although you don't do this on purpose, sometimes after interpreting for hours, you may actually speak on the same tone forever and ever, and you just hope that it's over soon. Good command of language. What you have to do is you have to use melody, you have to have clear articulation, you have to use concise sentences, you have to be credible and confident, you have to have a convincing attitude. People have to believe that you understand what you're saying, although when you are an interpreter, very often you have no idea what you are saying, but you just pretend because you cannot, as an interpreter, you, you cannot hesitate with your voice or say, say something like that. You have to act like you know what's happening. And perfect command of language, not just good, but perfect. Um, in the EU institutions, generally, you interpret into your mother tongue. And it may seem easy, but um, it actually isn't. You have to have a perfect command of your mother tongue. So, to create uh, an interpreter's identity, you have to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Um, there are some people who are actually very good speakers and who don't have any weaknesses. I'm not one of them. Uh, so. To become an interpreter, you identify those strengths and weaknesses and you see which part of your identity can stay and which has to go and has to be replaced. And you have to make conscious effort to work on said weaknesses. You create an alter ego of sorts. Um, okay, well, once you have the skills that I mentioned, the knowledge of language and cultures and so on, you can work on these things. Um, many of these things you can change, but for example, some of the things that some people might find disturbing you cannot change, um, like your vocal range. If you're an alto, a mezzo, or a soprano, you're not going to change that. If you're a man and you're a bass or a tenor, you cannot really change the depth of your voice, nor the color or the quality of your voice. Uh, and that's fine. Some people still find it problematic. They may say, I don't like his or her voice. Well, you cannot do everything. You cannot work on that. You can work on these things, though intonation, melody, and stress. An interpreter has to work with melody to keep uh, people's attention. We know that attention is scarce, uh, it's a commodity, and you have to work with that. As an interpreter, when you're speaking, you have to say or pronounce the commas and uh, the periods, the full stops at the end of sentences. You don't want to create one, you do not want to create one never-ending sentence. Uh, there has to be a sense of ending sentences. Although now I, as a speaker, am creating one never-ending sentence, so I hope the interpreters are coping well. Um, you have to articulate very well. Articulation is important. Sometimes um, you can uh, use a lack of articulation if you don't really hear somebody's name. You go, and now I pass the floor on to you, Mr. Thington. Um, but that's not really good. Um, if you know the words and the names, you have to be articulate. You have to be understandable. Your voice has to be clear. You have to convey a feeling of interest that you actually care for what's being said. And tempo. Tempo is important. Um, it's important to keep more or less the same pace throughout your interpretation. Um, sometimes, when I was interpreting, and I did not quite know what the speaker was saying, I slowed down a bit, I made a pause, then I understood what he was saying, so I quickly finished the sentence in a jubilant effort to show that, oh, I know what's happening. Um, and that's uh, 
that's something you should work on as well. You should keep the same pace, same tempo all the time. Um, that's for the voice mod modulation. Um, text structure and language command. Kiss means keep it short and simple, so that's for the text. You have to click. Okay. You have to create sentences which are finished and which are meaningful. You have to avoid silences, which is sometimes very difficult because sometimes uh, speakers are saying something, they finish one sentence, and they start another sentence with something like, oh, okay, well, uh, now, uh, okay, so let me, um, let's, now those are like 10 words which said nothing, and you really cannot be quiet in the interpreter's booth. So you have to say something like, okay, so now let's carry on with this topic. You have to make something up. You should not, uh, you should avoid silences and pauses. Careful about linking words. Sometimes it may happen to you that you use the wrong linking word at the beginning of a sentence and then it doesn't make sense. Um, it happened to me that a speaker started a sentence with one linking word. Um, it was a Spanish speaker and they're very specific and they actually never finished the meaning of the sentence. They were talking about Latvian people uh, and they said, La some Latvian youngsters know Russian and Latvian, so they have an advantage. And the sentences they were saying, it's going to be incorrect. Uh, and the sentences the speaker was saying was, we need to mention the fact that young Latvians who uh, master two languages uh, because they know Russian and Latvian because their parents moved from Russia to Latvia, so they grew up in a... They master these languages because they grew up in, uh, in a multilingual environment. And he never finished what we have to say about those Latvian youngsters. So I was interpreting and um, obviously uh, this vein popped up on my forehead and I had to finish the sentence somehow uh, because I already used the linking phrase at the beginning. So I just basically repeated what was said. I said, oh, we have to say that these people are bilingual and they have an advantage over other people, other youngsters. You have to use the right register, something that I was struggling with. Um, sometimes you should not resort to colloquialisms. You can say that an earthquake killed a thousand people. Uh, you can say that a thousand people lost their lives in an earthquake you should keep the same register as the speaker. You should definitely not, not say a thousand people kicked the bucket in an earthquake. Um, and you may not do this consciously, but sometimes it happens that you cannot remember the correct word, so you use something colloquial, which sounds very bad. You have to have a rich vocabulary. You have to use synonyms, not always use the same words. You have to know phrases and idioms, of course. And as I said, you have to sound like a radio presenter, so good voice, voice that projects, uh, good modulation. Uh, now the last part is about believability, so you have to be confident, convincing, and believable. You have to be interesting and interested. Uh, you have to keep the listener's attention, and uh, you also have to seem like you are interested in what's saying, even though if you're interpreting something that's utterly boring. Um, you have to be aware of the situation and have knowledge. You have to, it has to seem like you have extra knowledge, like you know what's happening. A lot of the time you are just pretending as an interpreter, you're just pretending that you know very well what's going on, but you just have no idea. You just act like it. Um, yes, in a way, being an in, creating an interpreter's identity is an ideal you strive for. It's an ideal you try to achieve. It's always a work in progress. And in comparison with translators, translators can actually create and give perfect work. Interpreters only leave a job unfinished, undone, half finished. Uh, it's never perfect, but it's a constant effort to make it perfect. Um, more or less, my presentation was about not the content of interpreting, but about the form. Uh, they say you should not judge a book by its cover, but um, the cover is what sells. So, as an interpreter, you should, yes, keep the content, know the languages and everything, but you should also be very convincing. You should, uh, yeah, you should keep the listener's attention. It's somehow a game of smoke and mirrors. We're all just pretending that we know what's happening, even though we might not really know that. Um, yeah, some final words of advice. As an interpreter, you have to 
capitalize on your assets. You have to identify your strengths and use them. You have to work on your weaknesses and improve. And um, when I was training to become an interpreter, I was kind of afraid that I would lose my own identity, the way I speak, uh, or who I am. I would become someone I'm not. But actually, that's not what happens. Uh, your identity stays in the booth and uh, always surfaces in the booth. Um, it's like driving. You have to improve constantly. Uh, and it's even more difficult than driving because you have to improve uh, throughout your life. It may seem daunting and scary, but it actually isn't because I believe it is beautiful in a way. Um, because your job forces you to learn all your life. Your job forces you to grow and improve and to become a better, pers better, better version of yourself. And that, I think, is very valuable in real life, too. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>